Hold up. not meaning to be gone that long uh what's up youtube fam and people that like to occasionally come to my channel just to check out videos um so i was supposed to have been gotten out uh crossplay dead by daylight content for you guys and gave you guys an update on my current thoughts of what the game is and the game state and stuff didn't get to that i'm gonna be real with you uh I kind of got sidetracked with other games and stuff, and it just never crossed my mind. But one day I was on Dead by Daylight, and I happened to be uh, waiting for a match, and I was scrolling through some comments on my YouTube channel to see if I had missed any or didn't reply to any, and it turns out that someone had, you know, did tell me that they wanted to know my thoughts on the crossplay of the game. And I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that now. So, hey, I didn't forget. <laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, I'm making it now. So, my thoughts on the crossplay. This is probably going to be like a four or five ish part video. Uh, I don't want it to be too long, but I still want you guys to have what? enough gameplay in it. Okay. So, my thoughts on the crossplay. It's really good. I've been finding games and uh, survivor cues very consistently. Now when I play a solo survivor, which you guys know me to be a survivor main. Now when I find, uh, now when I play as survivor and solo queue, I find matches way more consistently. So yeah, I've been finding a lot more games uh, for survivor queue, uh, for solo survivor queue quite uh, quickly actually. I'd say my survivor queue time for finding solo games is like 30 seconds now. As before the crossplay, it was about roughly three to four minutes. And then my killer cues for the crossplay now is roughly about a minute and maybe two minutes. As before the crossplay is about 20, 25 seconds. So I am finding games consistently between both. There are those rare occasions for a killer queue where I am not finding anything for straight seven or eight minutes and I might either have to reset my modem or uh, reset my console and even then that doesn't work so it's probably not an internet issue or anything like that. Okay, so thoughts, uh, other thoughts on the crossplay. Where do I want to go with this? I'll start with, I guess, what I've been noticing. I know it seems as though I had forgot about the whole crossplay video in general and you guys asking me my thoughts on it, and that's not entirely the case. What was really happening was just that I, was, I got super sidetracked and focused on other games. But in the meantime, I was watching a lot of other streamers and slash YouTubers play Dead by Daylight and content creators in general play Dead by Daylight. And I noticed this one peculiar thing about the attitudes in Dead by Daylight. And as we all know, there are a lot of elitist and scrubby attitudes in Dead by Daylight like there is in any other competitive form game. But it seems as though now there is this, this negative air floating around Dead by Daylight now that the crossplay feature has been added. I am hearing a lot of snide remarks and comments about us console players being scrubs or about PC players just being absolutely trash at the game or about Xbox players just never knowing how to play the game or never having a brain. And don't get me wrong, our views on our, on the consoles that we play and the consoles that other people play might differ. For example, 
I don't like Xbox. I feel like Xbox itself isn't a gaming console. It's the point of having an Xbox when you could get a PC, but I also understand that not everybody can afford a $600 to $1,500 gaming computer, you know, and maybe an Xbox was the only thing that they could afford at like $250, maybe $400. I can understand that. I mean, obviously, I, I play on PS4 myself. As far as Xbox players go, um, in general, I feel like whatever opinions, especially when we're talking about what's going on in our content, or as far as like our channels go, our Twitch, our YouTube channels, as far as our opinions on the players of those bases go, I feel like it's highly negative to encourage other players to be just as toxic as you are by making comments as snide like console with PC scrubs. It's causing this negative air around the game where now players are players in general as well as survivor friends groups and even some killers are becoming increasingly more toxic just because they know that they're on a crossplay and can't really discern if they're playing against a console player or another PC player. And it's not hard to figure out the differences between the two playstyles unfortunately since console players move really differently due to the uh, analog stick and PC players move much more precisely or cleaner should i say pc players move a lot more clean um, in the game in general like in this video i'm going up against a group of pc players which i i can tell by how they move and how clean their movement is it's a little bit harder for me to catch their 360 so on and so forth so yeah i'm i'm not a big fan of that um, all in all, I feel like the game still has a long way to go and improve, and that's pretty much where I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to name drop any content creators for now until I see that it's becoming a huge problem to where I might even want to attempt calling it out, and even then it's probably going to be suggested as an idea, that way I don't come off as attacking a content creator. More survivor friends groups and killers have become increasingly more toxic too. For survivor friends, it's been you know the same old SWF bully fail stuff, clicky flashlights, tea bags, tea bags after pallet, tea bags if they're escaping, tea bags on their way to a loop, and then they get and then they're stupid enough to get hit. <clears throat> and then you know for a killer, you pretty much know most of the the dudes pretty much just shaking their head or torturing people on the hook, so on and so forth. Um, hmm. Moving on from that, from that point, I'm going to answer a couple of questions that maybe some of you might have for me, rather you're new to the channel or part of the channel or just a random viewer. <clears throat> um, am I having fun with Dead by Daylight? And was I having fun with Dead by Daylight before the crossplay? And was I having fun with Dead by Daylight after the crossplay? No. Before the crossplay, I wasn't having that much fun with the game in general. I was actually starting to get bored with the game. Not to necessarily say that I don't like the game, but the game definitely lacked excitement. And with the killer changes that had been made, the game was exciting for maybe a very short period of time, like off cost, maybe 12 hours, and then, you know, same old stuff, different day. I just, I don't know, I just got bored. Um, before anybody asks, do I lose that often? No. I think out of, I want to say out of, for every 90 games that I play in Dead by Daylight, I will probably only lose about 15 of those. And that's on an honest uh, level when it at least comes to my killer gameplay. When it comes to survivor gameplay, it's a whole different area because I feel like pipping is just enough for me to win. When it comes to survivor, since that's really all you should care about as survivor, since the escape itself doesn't necessarily mean anything. Ah! 
am I having fun with the game now that the cosplay feature has been added? No. The cosplay feature just made it a lot easier for me to find games consistently, but it still doesn't change my opinion overall about the game state and whether or not I feel like it should be fun or maybe something should be different. This isn't to say that Dead by Daylight has lost any of its fear factor, because being scared and being entertained are two completely different things. Even though, to me, there's nothing scary in Dead by Daylight, unless you're playing against like a jump scare Myers on, uh, on Larry's Memorial Institute. And even then, it, there's nothing scary about that if you already know that it's a jump scare Myers, so moving on from that little tangent. The issue that I have, which is why I either feel bored or with the game, or why I just don't find the game as fun as I did when I, when maybe I was new to the game, is probably because there's nothing new or exciting aside from the killers and their changes. We are getting a new killer with some updated graphics coming soon to Dead by Daylight. Hell, it could even drop tonight or tomorrow or whenever, to be honest with you. It could even drop right after this video and everything that I would have said in this point would be null and void for like maybe a day or two before I'd have to post another update. But regardless, I feel like in order to solve this issue overall, survivors need a secondary objective, kind of like the Hollow Blight with uh, Halloween last year, where you had to go to the different pus markers, collect the serum, and you had to collect a certain amount before you could earn certain rewards, so on and so forth. I feel like survivors need a primary second objective that is mandatory or that they need to do in order for the game to expand a little bit. And my opinions on that is here's why reason one you guys already know everybody's complaint from a killer side and from a high level survivor side not only from me but from other content creators as well generators in this game fly way too fast and your ability to stop them is literally dependent on how half decent or dumb the survivors you're going against are or should I say, do the survivors you're playing against have a brain, or do they like to just do a lot of dumb stuff and mess up? And that's no insult to survivors in general, that's just my personal take on it. There are some survivor groups that I have played against where I was just kind of like, you guys are doing everything wrong, how did you get up to this rank? Personally, I feel like it when the generators fly too fast which a lot of other killer players and killer mains uh, as well as other survivors that play killer actually people that play killer in general a lot of other killers would agree that when the generators fly too fast depending on the killer you're playing you're forced to adapt and adopt a play style that you don't necessarily like you know survivors don't like camping and tunneling well there are a lot of killers and people who play killer out there that don't like that either for example i'm one of them i don't necessarily tunnel or camp unless i'm presented with an option that says i can't do anything else other. a good example is with this ace i the fangman player never showed herself and she strictly went back to hiding so the only other person that I could chase in this situation specifically was the ace player. Um, because I'm being presented with the with one out of the only two options that are left in the game now, and it's that type of stuff. I'm forced to uh, adopt these playstyles, and, and don't get me wrong, it helps me win, but it's not the win that I necessarily care about. I want to feel, in this game, I want to feel rewarded for being good at the game or being decent at the game, and I want to be punished when I'm playing bad. And I feel like this game, in its own way, when you play as killer, punishes you for all three or four of those things simultaneously. If you get all the wins in the game due to the fact that you were just out playing the survivors in the group and let's say you did it too fast the game punishes you by not rewarding you with pips or enough blood points and then if you you know don't get any kills then the game punish you, punishes you hardly by either making you lose a piece of your rank or you 
you know, only really comes to people DCing really would you miss like almost a full rank because it's or half a rank, you miss half a rank. On the other hand, um, personally, I just don't like the current game state right now. This doesn't mean that I, I'm not having fun with Dead by Daylight, uh, like. 24 7 that I play the game because if I wasn't having fun every time I get on this game then I really shouldn't be playing it and I wouldn't be playing it my personal opinion where the game is right now and as it stands is that about 90 I want to say 90 percent of the games that I play I'm not really having much fun and the only time that I am having fun in the game is either when I'm actually going up against an actual interesting group of survivors or I'm playing the build with the killer that has a weird play style or I have to ad adapt oddly to play against the survivors that I'm playing against with said killer and build. And that's not always the easiest thing to do, which is what would make the game fun in that sense for me. But I feel like when you waste even one second in this game, generators will fly by and survivors will punish you hardcore for it. and rather you win or lose the game still finds some type of way to punish you as it stands right now generators at base is just extremely like unbalanced in terms of speed and i think that's the only really big complaint about and i won't go into it because you guys already heard all the arguments before so yeah last but not least there is an update i will be streaming uh, either saturday nights or sunday afternoon Specific details will be in my description, but in case you don't read the description, since there are people that don't read the description, I will be streaming indefinitely on Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. And Saturday night, it is a possible that I'll stream. If I do end up streaming Saturday, I will still stream Sunday. And if I don't stream Saturday, I'm still streaming Sunday. No matter what, I'm still streaming on Sunday. Saturday night, you should look at my YouTube channel to find the stream on and live at 9 p.m. EST. And if you don't, then that probably means that I got really busy since I am supposed to be busy most of that day. Anyway, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section on this video. Peace.